Hello, and welcome to the 35th Annual Arizona MLK Living the Dream Celebration presented by PetSmart and Verizon. This celebration is being supported by the beautiful Musical Instrument Museum in Phoenix. I'm Ron Williams, Chairperson of the Arizona MLK Committee Events and Activities, and I'm honored to co-chair this event with the one and only Reverend Reginald Walton. On behalf of Dr. Gene Blue and the entire Arizona MLK Committee, we welcome you. With the passing of one of our community icons, we dedicate this 35th annual Arizona MLK celebration to the late, honorable, 22-year Phoenix City Councilman and Vice Mayor, Calvin C. Good. Just as our MLK Lifetime Achievement Award is presented in his name, his legacy will live on forever. To the Good family, thank you for sharing this giant of a man with the community. On behalf of the community, we thank you, Calvin C. Good. Rest in peace, sir. We know he watches over us at today as we celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. So enjoy the celebration, and now a word from our sponsors. Hello and good evening. My name is Desmond Jack Bear, and I'm one of the local executives for Verizon right here in Phoenix, Arizona. On behalf of Verizon, I'd like to thank the Arizona Opportunities Industrialization Center, uh, all of the executives, for having Verizon participate and partner in this, the 35th annual Arizona Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Living the Dream celebration. We look forward to a great agenda and evening of events. Thank you. They don't care where you're from. They don't care who you marry. They don't care about your age, how you look, or if you go to therapy. Pets don't care about what makes us different. They just love. One in five pets find homes through PetSmart Charities. Adopt today at PetSmartCharities.org. And now, to provide opening remarks, please welcome a MLK Lifetime Achievement Award honoree and MLK Legacy Award honoree. Dr. Gene Blue is the president and CEO of the Arizona OIC and chairperson of the Arizona MLK Celebration Committee. Please welcome Dr. Gene Blue. By the grace of God and through the will of the voters of Arizona, we are celebrating the 35th, 35th recognition of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday and a holiday for all of us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for making this possible. We look forward to doing much more with the citizens of Arizona. Thank you. Next, to provide welcoming remarks, is the mayor of the fifth largest city in the United States, Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego. She's also the second elected female in Phoenix history and the youngest big city mayor in our nation. Please welcome Mayor Kate Gallego. Good morning to each of you. Thank you to the Arizona OIC, to Ron, to Reverend Walton, to the entire committee for this first of its kind virtual Arizona MLK Living the Dream celebration in this, the 35th year of the annual event. We have an opportunity to reflect together on Dr. King's legacy, and we have the chance to honor those in our own community who embody his message of freedom, equality, justice, and love and deliver these principles through their work, including Calvin C. Good, who we lost so recently. I'd like to take a few moments to say a few things about this true servant leader who was devoted to the city and its communities. Mr. Good's life was a model of service. He was Phoenix's second elected African-American and our longest seated councilman. He served for a total of 11 terms and a record 22 years, including time spent as vice mayor the Lifetime Achievement Award, the city's highest recognition for civil rights work, which will be presented later in the program, is named in his honor. I want to thank his family for sharing him with us for years. It is fitting that we are honoring a true Phoenix icon today, as well as others who have been instrumental in shaping our city. The thing I love most about the city of Phoenix is our people. 
And in spite of everything in 2020 and 2021 so far has thrown our way, our people have made this city so much stronger. Our diversity of background, ideas, and passions is what makes this city a great place to live. Running through all this diversity is a deep commitment to give back, which is exemplified by today's awardees. Harry Garawal, this year's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Calvin C. Good Lifetime Achievement Award honoree, and Carolyn Bristow Chapman, Freddie Dobbins Jr., Angela Garman, and Mel Hanna, the 2021 Living the Dream honorees. To each of you, it is my privilege to say thank you for your commitment to making our communities and the city better. There's cause for optimism, but so much work to be done. One of our big battles this year will be access to healthcare, which is a civil rights issue. Our community is in the midst of vaccination. Right now, there is data saying that many of our young people, including those in the African-American community, are concerned about getting vaccinations in particular. I understand there is historic and justifiable reasons for this concern, but I want to encourage you to look at the science and to think about how you can protect your loved ones. May it be your parents, your grandparents, or someone else by getting vaccinated. When my time comes, I am looking forward to doing so. And I hope that you as community leaders who are watching will help us with that challenge as well as so many others that are near to award winners today and to Vice Mayor Good, such as fighting for affordable housing and great jobs in our community. We have so much work to do, but amazing partners from OIC to GPOL, happy anniversary, NAACP, and the countless wonderful faith organizations and others that have helped us build this great city. Dr. King was right when he reminded us that the arc of justice will bend and that the time is right to do what is right. Thank you, enjoy this historic event. It has been the tradition of this celebration to open the program each year with the infamous Torch Runners, who would lead the procession of honorees now in their 15th year. We are the runners. Well, we're here today because we are the Torch Runners, and the Torch stands for the new light or the new year that's coming on and the new hope. We are the Runners! We are the Runners! These are high school students from Franklin Police and Fire High School, and they've been running with me for the last four years. I joined this program because, in a way, I wanted to contribute and support MLK's dream, which, as we all know, was to end segre segregation and racism. And I thought of this as a way for all of us to come together and just make his dream come true. Let's please welcome our co-chairs. Ron Williams is a decorated veteran of the United States Air Force, a humanitarian and an award-winning community and business leader. He is both an Arizona MLK Living the Dream Award honoree, as well as an Arizona MLK Calvin C. Good Lifetime Achievement Award honoree. 
Reverend Reginald Walton is the senior pastor of Phillips Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church in Phoenix. He's community leader, social justice advocate, and author. He is a member of the Phoenix Human Relations Commission and currently a doctoral student at the Interdenominational Theological Center in Atlanta, Georgia. Please welcome Ron Williams and Reverend Reginald Walton. Due to COVID-19, we were able to combine components of our Arizona MLK Interfaith Prayer Breakfast with the MLK Awards Breakfast to create a virtual celebration today. I'm honored to co-chair this wonderful celebration with Reverend Reginald Walton. I wanna thank the Honorable Jean Blue for the opportunity to serve on this committee for the last 19 years. Whereas we usually limit our audience to 1,000 plus attendees in person, I'm excited that we got to share this celebration virtually worldwide. Reverend Walton, I think we have a great celebration to share with our audience today, and thank you for your leadership, sir. Thank you so very much, Ron. We are bringing faith traditions together in the vision of Dr. Martin Luther King. It doesn't matter where you come from, but what matters is that your heart has the heart of justice. And so, after the national anthem, we will have the Negro National Anthem, lift every voice and sing. Then we will have the Pledge of Allegiance. After we have the Pledge of Allegiance, we will have our invocation by Bishop Jennifer Redall, who is the Episcopal Bishop for the Episcopal Church here in the state of Arizona. And now we have our national anthem performed by Cassandra Williams and Maya Williams. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Thank you, Cassandra and Maya Williams. In 1899, a young school principal named James Weldon Johnson was called to address an audience in attendance to a memorial on the anniversary of President Abraham Lincoln's assassination. Only 20 years had passed since the Reconstruction era and the lynchings were on the rise in the segregated South. Johnson started to compose a poem with the intent on paying homage to his enslaved ancestors and their struggle. The poem was written and later composed into a song which became the powerfully and nationally recognized piece that represents the symbol of unity, perseverance, and strength for a race. Lift Every Voice When Sing was born. Often called the Black National Anthem, this song has inspired generation after generation of African Americans and continues today. Here to perform Lift Every Voice and Sing is the trio called Nodge. Nakia Meekins, Adora Lewis, and Janet Williams. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. 
Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let all rejoice in Christ. Higher as the listening skies, let it resound loud as the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day March on till victory is won. Still need the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with the steady beat, have not a weary feet come to the place for which our Father sighed? We have come over a way that with tears have been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. Out from the gloomy past till now we stand gleam of a bright star is cast. God of our weary years, God of our silent
And now, for a very important part of our program, let's welcome back our co-chair, Reverend Reginald Walton. Thank you so very much, Ron. Normally, under normal circumstances, we would have an interfaith prayer breakfast as part of the Arizona MLK celebration. Today, we are doing our best to bring a cross-section of all of the uh, faiths that are represented here in Arizona. Today, we will have a Christian prayer provided by myself, followed by a Jewish prayer, the Baha'i faith, the Hindu faith, then the Muslim faith. And so, let us pray. God of our weary years and God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far along the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in thy path, we pray. We pray, God, that today we would do your work, your will, your way. And in the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, in whom we honor today, that we would always know that the arc of the, the moral arc of the universe bends towards justice. And so we pray, amen. Please welcome Rabbi Robert Kravitz. The shofar, the ram's horn, speaks with many voices and has many sounds. It calls us to order in prayer. The broken sound of the shofar tells us also of the crisis in people's lives, the suffering that people have everywhere. And the shofar also speaks of the shattered souls that are out there that are in need of our help and our support, the breaking hearts that we can uplift. And finally, the shofar cries out to all of us to work together in unity as one. My name is Nadia Kaligi. I'm from the Baha'i Faith, and this is a prayer on unity by Baha'u'llah, the prophet founder of the Baha'i Faith. Oh my God, oh my God, unite the hearts of thy servants and reveal to them thy great purpose. May they follow thy commandments and abide in thy law. Help them, O oh God, in their endeavor and grant them strength to serve thee. O oh God, leave them not to themselves, but guide their steps by the light of thy knowledge and cheer their hearts by thy love. Verily, thou art their helper and their Lord. Baha'u'llah. Good morning. My name is Anita Rangaswamy. I'm on the board of the Arizona Interfaith Movement and on the Interfaith Council as the Hindu representative. As we begin the new year 2021, it is my pleasure and honor to share a short prayer on Lord Ganesha, who is also known as the Elephant God in the West. I will first give you the meaning in English and then recite the prayer in Sanskrit. So let us meditate on Lord Ganesha, one who is as radiant as a thousand suns, one who is all pervading and glowing with spiritual splendor, one who depicts inner calm and happiness, one who can destroy all obstacles in the spiritual and worldly paths. O Lord Ganesha, we pray for your grace. Enable the sincere efforts being put forth by every community in 2021 and beyond. So let us pray in Sanskrit. Om Shuklam Varadaram Vishnum Shashivarnam Chatur Bhujam 
प्रसन्न वदनम ध्यात सर्व विघ्नोपशात वक्रतुंड महाकाया कोटि सूर्य सम्रभा निर्विघ्न कुर मे देवा सर्व कार्यशु सर्वदा सर्वे भवन्तु सुखिनः सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कचि दुख भागे ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ नमस्ते All the praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the most compassionate, the most merciful, the ruler of the day of judgment. Only you we worship and only you we ask for assistance. Guide us on the straight path, the path of those who you were pleased with and not the path of those who you were angry with and went astray. On this blessed day of Martin Luther King, we're all reminded about the struggle that black people in this country went through in order to see some better days, in order to fight oppression, fight injustice. That struggle is still going. I pray that God makes us among those who continue to struggle for justice, human rights, and human dignity than every single one of us deserves in this world because we are all the creation of God. Let us pray. Loving, liberating, and life-giving God, we pray to you today as we remember the life of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Help us find a way to join Dr. King's vision of becoming beloved community with one another. Help us to tell the truth in love. Help us to repair the breach of division and hate and injustice. Help us to practice your way of love. And help us to proclaim your vision of that community where all are loved and all are loving. In the name of the God who created us, we pray. Amen. We want to express our thanks and gratitude to all of our interfaith participants. As we move closer to our award celebration, join me as we welcome back our co-chair, Ron Williams. Again, thank you to all of our interfaith participants for sharing today. Now, from our nation's capital, someone who is no stranger to Arizona. Congressman Greg Stanton served on the Phoenix City Council, Arizona Attorney General's Office, Mayor of the City of Phoenix, and now Congressman from Arizona's 9th Congressional District. Please join me in welcoming Congressman Greg Stanton. Good afternoon, I'm Congressman Greg Stanton. Welcome to the 35th Annual MLK Live in the Dream Award Celebration. Hope you're all doing well and staying as healthy as possible during this incredibly challenging time. I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to Gene Blue, Ron Williams, Reverend Reginald Walton, and the entire Arizona MLK Celebration Committee for bringing us all together, people from all backgrounds and walks of life, bringing us together in unity and gratitude for this wonderful annual event. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s life work continues to serve as a North Star in the fight for racial, economic, and social justice and equality for all. His work serves as a model for the ongoing civil rights movement and inspires people from all walks of life. This year, I found myself reflecting on one of his most well-known statements. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Dr. King's words ring true today, and we must continue to heed his calling. 2020 was a time of national pain and reckoning where we were once again faced with the difficult truth that equality has been denied to black Americans since the very beginning of our nation's history, and that systemic racism is currently present throughout our society. Because of the leadership of individuals in our own community, including Gene and Ron, 
and Reverend Walton and those gathered virtually today, our community will continue to achieve progress towards becoming a place of conscience and action. And I hope that today's celebration renews our focus and encourages us to continue to prove that no barrier can stand in our way as we work to achieve freedom and equality for all. Today, as we honor Dr. King's legacy, I'm proud to help recognize some amazing local leaders. For the Calvin C. Good Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Harry Garwall, who's done so much for our community over so many years, and the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s Living the Dream Award winners, Carolyn Bristow Chapman, Freddie Dobbins Jr., Angela R. Garman, and my friend, Mel Hanna. Their spirit of service has made sure that the arc of history does indeed bend toward justice. These inspiring and accomplished leaders embody Dr. King's legacy and have helped carry on his mission in their everyday lives. They serve as examples to us all, and their work has renewed the focus that we need to do our very best to make sure his dream continues to become a reality. So please join me as we recognize today's honorees and renewed our shared commitment to making sure our communities are a more just place where everyone, everyone is, feels welcome and it's a great place to live, work, and thrive. Happy birthday, Dr. King. Thank you for your incredible leadership and all the work that you did and your legacy is still benefiting us today. Thank you, Congressman Stanton. As we move into our awards portion of the program, I want to take this moment to acknowledge the hard work of the Arizona MLK Planning Committee. Special thanks to our subcommittee chairs, MLK Marketing Media and Sponsorship Chair, Virginia Fargo, co-chair by Mr. Jesse Airy. The MLK Community Days of Service, chaired by Monica Tipton. Our 35th annual Arizona MLK Living the Dream Celebration, co-chair Reginald Walton and myself. The MLK Henry Bondwell Scholarship Fund, Chair Dr. Will Counts. The MLK Candlelight Ceremony Concert, Chair Dr. Will Counts and Co-Chair Clara Briggs. Our MLK March Chair Marquis Scott and Co-Chair Antoine Skinner. And our MLK Festival Chair Lynette Campbell, Co-Chair Emmett Boyd. Our MLK Youth Celebration Chair Dr. Camilla Westenberg and our MLK Basketball Classic Chair Emmett Boyd. A heartfelt thanks to all of our committee members. Now, I get the great honor to introduce our keynote speaker, former United States Attorney General Eric Holder, Jr. Eric Holder served as the 82nd Attorney General of the United States from 2009 to 2015 and was the first African American to hold that position. After graduation from law school, he left New York to work for the Public Integrity Session of the Department of Justice for 12 years. He served as a judge of the Superior Court of the District of Columbia before being appointed by President Clinton as United States Attorney General for the District of Columbia and subsequently Deputy Attorney General. Following the Clinton administration, he worked at the law firm of Covington and Burling in Washington, D.C. He was a senior legal advisor to Barack Obama during Obama's presidential campaign and was ultimately selected as President Obama's first Attorney General. Ladies and gentlemen, Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Eric Calder. Today we gather to commemorate the birth of a man taken too soon from us. It is hard to think about his birth over 90 years ago without remembering his untimely death and the work that was left undone. We still feel that deepest of wounds, the passing of a man, but not the death of a dream. The senseless murder of our nation's most committed, most courageous, and most consequential drum major for justice. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. But on this more joyous day, we must again commit ourselves to making real the dream that animated his too short life. You know, the anniversaries of Dr. King's birth and death have provided important opportunities, not only to celebrate and to reflect upon his extraordinary life, but to consider where we are now as a nation, to take stock of our progress, to take responsibility for the work that remains before us and to rededicate ourselves to the dream of racial, social and economic justice it is Dr. King's living legacy. But let us also confront truth about him. Hard truth is the foundation for real, lasting, positive change. Now, in his life, Dr. King forced America to face what he termed the three evils, racism, poverty, and war. 
though he is revered now, that, that singular focus on those evils ultimately made him an unpopular figure. You know, by 1966, a Gallup poll found that almost two thirds of Americans had an unfavorable opinion of Dr. King as he emphasized his opposition to war and spread the focus of his work outside the South, he became a threatening, polarizing, and disliked figure. You know, I, I wish that Dr. King could be here with us today so that he could see how the, the new country that he helped to create has improved so much. I wish he could see how the system of American apartheid that he fought against has been legally dismantled. I, I wish he could see how people of all races treasure the memorial in his honor that stands on our National Mall. Above all, though, I wish he could see how effectively concerned women, LGBTQ Americans, still distressed minority communities, you know, students and citizens who have seen enough gun violence have copied Dr. King's tactics and how in acts of King-inspired nonviolent protests, they have launched their own movements, calling for and marching for fairness, opportunity, and justice. You know, despite the extraordinary progress that has shaped the last five decades and transformed our entire society, we're still marching, we're still striving, and we're still calling on our nation's leaders to act, not in a manner that is inconsistent with what is best in us, but more with a sense of justice, compassion, and common humanity. Because the unfortunate fact is that in, in 2021, America's long struggle to overcome injustice, to eliminate disparities, and to eradicate violence has not yet ended. And the age of bullies and bigots is not fully behind us. Bull Connor, and Jim Clark are gone, but parts of their legacy endure. This is indeed a time of challenge and consequence, but Dr. King was no stranger to such moments. You know, throughout his life, and most famously on the eve of his death, as he delivered the seminal mountaintop speech that would be his final sermon, Reverend King asked himself when, if, if given the choice of any period in time, he would choose to be alive. Well, Dr. King asked himself what era he would choose to experience and help shape his own he ultimately decided. Happiness, he explained, comes from embracing the blessings and burdens of destiny and the opportunities that arise in difficult times. Only when it is dark enough, Dr. King said, can you see the stars? Well, today, once again, it is dark enough. We have not yet reached the promised land, but today, once more, we can see the stars. We see them in the courage and the commitment of ordinary people nationwide, Americans of all ages, races, and backgrounds who refuse to give in to fear and frustration, who resist shameful attempts to exploit and to divide the American people, and who are keeping up the fight for the safety and civil rights of all. We see them in people who take to the streets and to the offices of their elected leaders. It is times like these when the power of Dr. King's example and his enduring words are brought into stark focus. And one of the most important lessons he left us is, is that it is necessary to be indignant and to be impatient so that it impels us to take action. That is what animates his letter from Birmingham jail, impatience. The fact that Dr. King's strength was rooted in frustration just as much as in faith is a great comfort to me. Now I say that because as proud as I am of our country, my country, and as grateful as I feel for the progress that we've made and the opportunities that the civil rights movement made available to me, the truth is that like Dr. King, I am dissatisfied. I'm dissatisfied that every day in America, a hundred of our fellow citizens are shot. I'm dissatisfied that economic progress remains uneven, that educational opportunity is far from uniform. And that in the face of these, face of these facts, simply acknowledging that black, matters, black lives matter too is, is controversial. I'm dissatisfied that I've had to have the talk with my then teenage son, the conversation that so many black families in America have had in order to protect their children about how to, to safely interact with people in law enforcement. And I'm dissatisfied that more than half a century after Dr. King helped pass the landmark Voting Rights Act of 1965, for too many Americans, the right to vote and the assurance that one vote is counted fairly remains under siege. To me, this is the chief civil rights issue of our time. And in that regard, our nation is not as different as it should be from the America that existed during the life of Dr. King. The Selma March was about the right to vote. The death of three civil rights workers in Mississippi in 1964 was about the right to vote. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 has justifiably been called the, the crown jewel of the civil rights movement. So much of Dr. King's work was to ensure the right to vote. 
As he so often pointed out in this great country, the ability of all eligible citizens to participate in and to have an equal voice in the work and the direction of government is not a privilege. It is a right. The ability to vote is not a privilege. It is a right. As Lyndon Johnson said, the vote is the most powerful instrument ever devised by man for breaking down injustice. Our nation's policies are determined by those who serve in elected office, and we must make certain that these representatives accurately reflect the choices of the American electorate. Yet, in many communities today, our political system is far from fair. It's been undermined by spurious and outright false claims of widespread voter fraud and by acts of voter suppression and the harmful purging of voter rolls. And it's been rigged by racial and partisan gerrymandering. There is still much for us to do. It is time for each of us to ask, as, as Dr. King so famously did, where do we go from here? What more can we do as individuals and as a society help realize Dr. King's vision of racial and social equality? Each of us must ask ourselves, what am I doing? How can we lift up the values that were at the heart of his sermons, the root of his actions, the core of his character, and the center of his life? Most importantly, how can we, how can we heal this divided nation as he sought to do and bring our fellow citizens together in the name of tolerance, nonviolence, compassion, love, and above all, justice. It's only by coming together that we can write the next great chapter of America's story. Dr. King is often quoted as saying that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Well, that's true, but only because caring, committed people like you put their hands on that arc and pull it towards justice. And so it must be again. So today, let us not merely reflect upon our past. Let's pledge our best efforts to protect the advances that we've inherited and make real the legacy that's been entrusted to each of us by the great man that we celebrate today. That is our charge. And this is our moment. As easy as it is, we must not look back toward a past that was comforting to too few and unjust to too many. That is not how to make America great. In order to make America great, we must do the difficult things embrace the uncertainties of future, and then shape that future in the way that truly great American generations always have. We must not give in to irrational fear and manufactured division, but instead embrace needed trust and national unity. Do not gather once a year and make Dr. King a vision from the past, embrace his work, his vision, and make him a living guide to a better future. Never forget that positive change is not promised it comes only as a result of commitment, action, sacrifice, endurance, and adherence to the values we must hold dear. As Dr. King said, the hottest place in hell is reserved for those who remain neutral in times of great moral conflict. So let us rise to the challenges of our time. And in the spirit of Dr. King, let us signal to the world that in America today, the pursuit of a more perfect union lives on, the march toward the promised land goes on, and the belief not only that we shall overcome, but that we will truly come together as one nation continues to push us forward. Thank you very much. All we say to America is be true to what you said on paper. If I lived in China or even Russia or any totalitarian country, Maybe I could understand some of these illegal injunctions. Maybe I could understand the denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges because they haven't committed themselves to that over there. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. And so just as I say we aren't going to let any dogs or water hoses turn us around, we aren't going to let any injunction turn us around. what will happen now we've got some difficult days ahead
But it really doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop. I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. And now I get the distinct honor to introduce our special guest speaker for today. He started his civil rights career as a youth coordinator for Dr. Martin Luther King, who inspired him to work in the civil rights movement his entire life. A social justice activist of more than 60 years, his experiences have given him an appeal to people from all walks of life. He earned his Master of Divinity degree from Duke University while serving an unjust 34-year prison sentence as a member of the Wilmington 10, who Amnesty International declared political prisoners. The Wilmington 10 case garnered international attention and was pardoned 40 years later. He also received a Doctor of Ministry degree from Howard University. In 1980, he became a vice president of the National Council of Churches. He was the national director of the Million Man March and is currently president and CEO of the National Newspaper Publishers Association. Dr. Chavis recently began hosting a weekly black-oriented public affairs talk show on public broadcasting system. The Chavis Chronicles is a very rare programming, and there are currently no weekly talk shows on network television, specifically from a black perspective. Joining us from the nation's capital, let's welcome civil rights icon, Dr. Benjamin Chavis, Jr. On behalf of the National Newspaper Publishers Association, representing the Black Press of America, and on behalf of my colleagues at the Chavis Chronicles weekly broadcast across the nation on the PBS television network, I am very pleased to participate and to support the 35th annual Arizona Martin Luther King Jr. celebration. I thank the Arizona Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Celebration Committee, co-chaired by Ron Williams and the Reverend Reginald Walton for the invitation to speak at today's celebration themed, Living the Dream. I also want to note uh, with appreciation my continued friendship there in Phoenix, A.P. Powell of the Arizona Foundation and I would note the leadership of Clovis Campbell, publisher of the Arizona Informant newspaper. At a young age, I was a teenager in my home state of North Carolina. I had the privilege to work as the youth and student coordinator for Dr. Martin Luther King and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in the 1960s. I learned firsthand the importance of not remaining silent in the face of injustice by standing up nonviolently always for that which is right. Dr. King's dream was the American dream that all should be treated fairly and equally as members of one diverse and inclusive human family and that no one should be discriminated against or harmed or done any wrong to because of race, ethnicity, language, gender, sexual orientation, poverty, or by any other factor. In light of what our nation and the world just witnessed on that fateful Wednesday, January the 6th, 2021, at our nation's Capitol building in Washington, DC, where the violent and fatal madness of those who stormed the nation's capital not only threatened our democracy, 
but also attempted to resurrect the worst of our nation's history of social, racial, and political alienation, hatred, and violence. But as Dr. King in the past reminded us, and I quote, truth crushed to the earth will always rise again, unquote. He also said, I quote, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, unquote. We are gathered today to celebrate the fact that Dr. King's dream of freedom, justice, and equality is still alive and still much needed. We need each other. Even amidst the terrible global COVID-19 pandemic, we need each other. The future of the United States of America will ultimately be in the hands of all of those who will not lose hope and those who will continue to stand up for what Dr. King called the beloved community. The state of Arizona is a state that today represents the future of America more than it represents the nation's past. We are therefore grateful, prayerful, and optimistic about today and tomorrow as we reaffirm that Dr. King's dream is still alive. May God continue to bless Dr. King's memory, his legacy, and dream. And may God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Dr. Chavis. Our annual MLK celebration is a major fundraiser that helps to support scholarships for our youth. To share information about the scholarship fund, please welcome Dr. Will Counts. The Bishop Henry L. Barnwell Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Scholarship Fund has deep roots in Arizona's African American community. The scholarship is named after MLK committee member Pastor Aubrey Barnwell's father, the late Bishop Henry Barnwell, who fought to make the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday a state holiday in Arizona. Despite threats to his life, Bishop Barnwell led nonviolent protest marches, meetings, and candlelight services. His ultimate goal was to provide scholarships to students who were unable to attend college without financial assistance. The Bishop Barnwell MLK Scholarship Fund has supported students for over 40 years. When Bishop Barnwell passed away four years ago, his son, Pastor Aubrey Barnwell, myself, Gene Blue, Ron Williams, Carol Coles, Henry, and others uh, continue to realize his dream by building a pathway, uh, by, by celebrating the, college, the, the scholarship and bu building a pathway to higher education for students of all backgrounds and experiences. The 2020 scholarship recipients are Austin Sloan, Emily Range, Kinsley Brooks, Zareja Burleson, Travante McLean, Zeer Myers, Jaden Hunley, Arnold Dates, and Sophia Marina. We have a few scholarship winners here today to share their appreciation for the scholarship and how it helped them to continue college. Hello, my name is Austin Sloan. I received the Bishop Barnwell and Martin Luther King scholarship. This scholarship has helped me with my tuition and uh, given me peace of mind and less stress. As a full-time student, that means a lot. And um, I'm aspiring to be an IT professional and I'm honored, blessed, and so thankful to be able to receive this scholarship. Thank you. Hi, my name is Emily Range and I'm so very grateful to be receiving the scholarship because it's allowing me to continue my undergraduate education and in turn allowing me to continue the academic training that I will need to reach my aspiration of becoming a neuroscientist. And with, one day with my knowledge of research, I hope to reach people all over, all over the world and the scholarship is helping me do that. Each year, the Phoenix Human Relations Commission in collaboration with the Arizona MLK Committee, 
oversees the process of nominating, selecting, and honoring Valley residents for their lifelong commitment to creating a compassionate and socially just community. This year, we will recognize one MLK Lifetime Achievement honoree and four MLK Living a Dream honorees. To share with us more about the Phoenix Human Relations Commission, please welcome Chairperson Michael Williams. The Human Relations Commission is made up of 17 talented individuals who serve at the pleasure of the mayor. Our mission is to promote respect and understanding among all groups by eliminating discrimination through the city of Phoenix. One of our major responsibilities is the navigation of nominations made by the great citizens of Phoenix and the selection of those individuals to receive the awards. This year is somewhat bittersweet as we struggle through the COVID-19 pandemic and the loss of a role model who just so happens to be the face and the name of our signature award, the Calvin Good for Lifetime Achievement. We thank the family for sharing him with us. We pray for you in your grief, but we celebrate the life of a civil servant that has meant so much to the city of Phoenix and the Valley of the Sun. Thank you. And now, the moment we've been waiting for, the presentation of our annual Arizona MLK Awards. We're excited about our newest legacy sponsor, presenting sponsor, Verizon. Here to tell us more about Verizon and to present the Arizona MLK Living the Dream Awards, please welcome the Director of Network Field Engineering, Desmond Jackbeer, Jr. Hello, Desmond Jack Baird, Verizon. Joining you again for this exciting segment of today's celebration, the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Living the Dream Award presentation. This award is presented to honorees selected by the City of Phoenix Human Relation Commission to recognize individuals who have made an impact to the quality of life in Phoenix by helping to eliminate discrimination. We at Verizon feel a deep sense of pride providing communications infrastructure nationally and in doing so, enabling technology for the advancement of everyone. Like these honorees, we also envision a world where no one is left behind. These honorees are seen as community champions for social justice. Their tireless efforts are being recognized as they continue to be allies and accomplices for equity in Phoenix. Today, I present to you the honorees of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Living the Dream Award. Carolyn Bristow Chapman. Freddie Dobbins Jr. Angela Garmon and Mel Hanna. I'd like to congratulate you all. I'd also like to celebrate this year's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s Lifetime Achievement Award honoree, Harry Garwal. In parting, I'd like to leave you with a piece of the Verizon Credo that comes to mind as we celebrate these tireless, selfless, efforts by these individuals. We know our best was good for today, and tomorrow we'll do better. And now, to co-present our first two 2021 Arizona MLK Living the Dream awardees, please welcome Rob Taylor with Salt River Project. Dr. King's message and his mission are as relevant now as they were in the 1960s. Following the senseless killings of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and others, there is a renewed and powerful call for action from across our country. People from all races, ethnicities, and backgrounds are demanding change. 
This is a window of opportunity to make needed change. SRP believes that all of us can and should be part of that change. We're working to elevate our company culture to create a workplace that is inclusive, inspires a feeling of belonging, and truly reflects our community. Our employees are turning those aspirations into actions, engaging in open and honest conversations, looking to find common ground, and saying something when they see something that isn't right. SRP's leadership is committed to harnessing the power of diversity and inclusion to make us stronger as an organization. We believe that our actions will help to create a more equitable future for our customers, our employees, and our community. We're proud to sponsor this important celebration. Thank you. Thank you, SRP. Your first Arizona MLK Living the Dream honoree, Freddie Dobbins, Jr. When Mr. Ron Williams called me, I was just speechless. I, I, but I felt deeply honored to be selected as an MLK awardee. Uh, Dr. King has inspired me with regards to my volunteer work and the fact that he had compassion for mankind. And I think without compassion, you cannot get a lot of things accomplished. Oh, I've done so many, so many things. Um, uh, my primary focus has been the Boys and Girls Club of the East Valley. I started that in 1991. And then I'm also uh, on the Board of Trustees for the Phoenix Boys Choir. Uh, I've, I have volunteered with the NAACP AXO competition. I've been a member of Arizona Council of Black Engineers and Scientists, a member of the United Way Funding Panel, volunteer with Junior Achievement, volunteer with uh, a camp that uh, Sheriff Papal used to have up in Payson for kids, tutoring, math and science tutoring. The people that have had a major influence in my life would be my parents, Freddie and Barbara Dobbins. They were Christian people and they showed us a lot of things by example. And part of it is that if you could help somebody, their belief was, it was that you should help them. I'd like to say thank you to my nominator, Michael Neal, also to the MLK Nominating Committee, my wife, Rose, all the people who have helped me along the way. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. King, for opening a lot of doors that have been closed. And without those efforts, uh, a lot of change would not have happened. You changed the United States. You changed the whole world. And I'd also like to thank my nominator, Michael Neal, and also my wife. And again, thank you, Dr. King. I'm truly honored to be the recipient of this award. I would like to thank the MLK Nomination Committee, my nominator, Michael Neal, my wife, Rose, and also SRP, and thank you very much. Congratulations, Freddie Dobbins, Jr. Our next 2021 Arizona MLK Living the Dream honoree is Mel Hannah. Ron, I um, was somewhat shocked and for an old politician, believe it or not, somewhat speechless <laughs> for the moment. Um, but after that, after those two things kind of sunk in, was greatly humiliated and proud. Dr. Keene showed that anyone can step up with the right motivation, the right heart, and do what's necessary. You don't have to have a major organization. You don't have to have good big money to be paid to do it, or at least you shouldn't. You know, since I've been here in, in uh, Phoenix, which has now been close to 30 years, I'm a native Arizonan, born in Little Winslow, Arizona, but been here for a number of decades now. Um, initially worked for uh, state government and then for the Greater Phoenix Urban League, uh, the NAACP, the Arizona Commission of African American Affairs, the whole variety of of activities that really are just uh, giving back to the community. Dr. Heen, we're here today. I would say first, you have started us on this journey. So we want to thank you for all your great work in getting us in the right direction. I would also say we need you now. Uh, there's a great need for not just diversity, but understanding and relationships. I'd have to say, you know, there's plenty of friends and one of them is with me this morning, but I would have to go to family, um, two folks in my family, particularly my wife, Shirley, 
who's been by my side all of these years. And then um, I have seven kids, but my daughter, Ashley, who unfortunately left us several months ago. Dr. King, thank you for opening our hearts, opening our eyes, opening our spirit to hopefully, with that kind of motivation, continue harder to get us where you felt we should be. And that's to equally treat everyone and have a system that's based on justice, understanding, and patience. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. King. First, give an honor to God. On behalf of the Hannah family, my wife Shirley, my seven kids, specifically my late daughter, precious daughter Ashley Ray Hannah, we very humbly and very graciously accept this very prestigious award. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Congratulations, Mel Hanna. Now, to co-present our next two 2021 Arizona MLK Living the Dream awardees, please welcome USAA. USAA has a long-standing commitment of diversity and inclusion. It shows up in our standards. It shows up as a strategic imperative for all of us. In years past, we've honored this strategic imperative of diversity and inclusion by having our employees participate in the local community Martin Luther King Day March. This year, because of events in the world, we're going to show our support virtually by having an entire week dedicated to our employees' understanding of diversity and inclusion and of Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King once said, the time is always right to do what is right. Our support this year demonstrates that commitment and we're very proud sponsors to do what is right for our community and our employees. Our next 2021 Arizona MLK Living the Dream Award honoree is Angela R. Garman. When I received that call, I was shocked, surprised, and I think I had to even ask, wait, am I a recipient? Whew. I come from a beautiful line of women. And when I think about my mothers and my sisters, they all wear their own super capes, right? They're my superheroes and I admire them so much. When I think about the biggest influence on my life, I think about my daughter because she is so wise uh, beyond her years. And every day I wake up, I think about, I have to be better for her. I just really wanna thank all the women in my life who has been an inspiration, a mentor, and a coach for me all of the years of my life. Dr. King was the spark that ignited the flame for social justice. And he used his voice over a time where it was unpopular for African-Americans to do so. And when I think about my own life and my own work, I think about two quotes of his. The first one is, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And I really use my platforms to talk about the disparity gaps for women minority owned businesses. And the second quote is, if you cannot fly, then run. If you cannot run, then walk. If you cannot walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, keep moving forward. And as the owner of a change management consulting firm and a woman who's overcome my own adversities, including cancer, I remind myself and others daily that you have to understand your capabilities. You have to keep moving forward towards your purpose and your mission. If Dr. King was here today, what would I say to him? I probably would say very little because I learned at a very young age, you learn more when you say less. And so I would probably ask quite a few questions. And the first one would be, what would you change in your journey, if anything? And I would sit there and just learn from one of the greatest people. Thank you, Dr. King, for being that spark that ignited the flame for social justice. Thank you, Dr. King. I often remind people that their presence makes a difference. And by receiving this MLK Living the Dream Award, it reminds me that my presence makes an impact. Thank you so much for the nomination and to the selection committee for this honor and this prestigious award. For those who are watching, please remember to be present despite your fears, advocate for what matters most, and make an impact where you are. God bless, thank you so much.
Congratulations, Angela R. Garman. Our next 2021 Arizona MLK Living a Dream Award honoree is Carolyn Bristow Chapman. When you called to tell me that I received uh, this award, I was quite surprised. I would just uh, like to thank my kinship mother, Ida Pratt, who raised me, who was an excellent teacher by profession, but more so a teacher for life. Well, in my book, certainly Dr. King is the greatest servant leader of all time. Dr. King uh, said uh, in life, the question is, what are we doing for others? And so my response to that question is, I feel like I am not uh, doing enough for others. And so it makes me think about that quote that I've heard uh, that our ancestors did more with less. Therefore, we must do more with more. If Dr. King were here today, the first thing I would do would be to express my gratitude to him for being such a great drum major for peace uh, and justice. And I would like to talk to him a little bit about some of the things, the most profound things he said. He said, he when he talked about poverty, he said, poverty is not new, but what is new is we have the resources to address it. And I would want to talk about the fact that we have the resources, but the gap between the have and the have nots is larger than it's ever been before. And then I would want to talk to him about his quote, either we are going to learn to live together as bro brothers and of course, sisters too, and or we are going to perish together as fools. Thank you, Dr. King, for being such an enduring and unstoppable force of good in the world. Thank you, Dr. King. First, I want to give all praise and honor to God, to Chairman Williams, to Dr. Jean Blue, to the Human Relations Commission, and to a special tribute to my nominator, Kim Covington. I accept this award in honor of my late kinship mother, Ida Pratt, and in honor of all those great ancestors and servant leaders on whose shoulders I stand. Thank you. Congratulations, Carolyn Bristow Chapman. Now, a word from one of our sponsors, Mercy Care. Hello, my name is Demario Vaughn with Mercy Care. We're a local nonprofit organization providing health care to Arizona's most vulnerable populations for more than 30 years. Mercy Care is honored to support this very important community event honoring the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We know that COVID has magnified the depths of the healthcare disparities for people of color and protests over racial injustices have reignited a call for civil rights, equity and justice. Mercy Care is committed to the advocacy for racial justice, to equality, to offering access to quality physical and behavioral health services and speaking up for those who cannot always advocate for themselves. You can learn more about Mercy Care at mercycareaz.org. Thank you. As we prepare to bring to the stage Mr. Chris Lee with PetSmart to present the MLK Calvin C. Good Lifetime Achievement Award, we will take this time to share a tribute and honor the late Honorable Calvin C. Good. Councilman Calvin C. Good served the Phoenix City Council for 22 years between 1972 and 1994. He was only the second African American elected to the council. He made many landmark decisions promoting social and economic justice 
defending civil rights, including a Phoenix Ordinance against workplace discrimination, and was instrumental in ensuring that the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day was officially recognized by the city of Phoenix as a holiday. To commemorate his service to the city, a municipal building was named after him. The city mourns the passing of a great leader. Thank you, Calvin C. Good. We are forever in your debt, sir. Now, to present the 2021 Calvin C. Good Lifetime Achievement Award to Mr. Harry Gerwall, please welcome Mr. Chris Lee, the Senior Director of Human Capital Solutions with PetSmart. Let me begin by saying how proud we are to be a part of an event that celebrates the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Events like this are important for our community. Given the myriad of challenges we continue to face, progress and support of civil rights, human rights, and basic human dignity must be commemorated. As we reflect on the legacy of Dr. King, we have a chance right now to recognize a few of the remarkable individuals who are working tirelessly to make a difference in the lives of the people of Arizona. Like so many, the PetSmart family was saddened to hear about the recent passing of Calvin C. Good. He was an iconic figure, he was a trailblazer, and he was a cherished member of the Phoenix community. May his venerated soul and legacy live on in power for generations to come. In that same light, I am very happy to congratulate this year's Calvin C. Good Lifetime Achievement Honoree, Mr. Harry Garewall. Harry, we applaud you, your dedication, and your lifetime of service to our community. Thank you for being a light and an inspiration for others to follow. PetSmart is proud to support each of this year's award recipients and, and air organizations in our community that work to unite us. We know that when we are united together, our organization is stronger, as well as our community. In fact, United Together is one of our core values. And through this value, we put equity front and center as we foster an environment in which all people of all backgrounds and all callings can excel. PetSmart is proud to support each of this year's award recipients, as well as organizations that unite our community. Unconditional love a value that we learn from our pets every day is the cornerstone of our culture at PetSmart. We believe our organization is strongest when we are united together with our community and our customers. In fact, united together is one of our core values, and it's through this value that we put equity front and center as we foster an environment where people from all backgrounds can excel. Last year, PetSmart made a commitment to support our black associates through meaningful action. We have enhanced our development and recruiting activities in order to expand black representation. We have also increased our funding to PetSmart charities for those communities that are underrepresented. And finally, we established a $1 million scholarship fund for our black associates and associates of color who want to continue to advance their educational aspirations. PetSmart proudly supports and participates in the ongoing community dialogue regarding social justice, diversity, inclusion, and equity. While we're here today as a sponsor, we also stand with you as a community partner and ally. Congratulations again to all this year's award recipients Thank you for your selfless commitment to our community, and may the legacy of Dr. King continue to light our paths. Thank you. Adopt today at PetSmartCharities.org. Thank you, Mr. Chris Lee. Now, for the moment we've been waiting for, your 2021 MLK Calvin C. Good Lifetime Achievement Award honoree, my good friend, Mr. Harry Gerwall. It was quite an honor and it was very humbling at the same time, you know, hearing, um, you know, the announcement from you, especially coming from you, that, you know, just absolutely made my day, man. I'd like to thank the person who nominated me, right, but also the committee.
because I know you all have a lot of applicants. You have a lot of really talented people, and I'm just so grateful and humbled to be the one that had been selected for this year's award. You know, so I think my biggest uh, single accomplishment that I'm very probably one of the proudest of is when we opened up a, uh, a high school for disconnected youth in South Phoenix. You know, um, young people that are either working or in school who never thought that they'd go back to high school and, and, and accomplish what they could do. So when we built that, you know, 50,000 square foot, $10 million building, and they walked in, they go, this for me? And we said, absolutely, you deserve this and more. And for me, that was one of my proudest moments. The other part was when we were able to get BF Goodridge Aerospace started up in South Phoenix because it created 180 jobs at that time uh, and then eventually at 350 jobs in the South Mountain community. A major influence in my life, aside from my wife, Lindy, um, was another gentleman who was a mentor of mine, uh, Les Judd. He helped me over 15 years to understand, you know, how things worked. But the one thing that I always appreciated was that he never tried to get me to get away from my community. He never tried to get me to change anything. And the biggest thing that I did learn was that as long as I maintained my passion, there was nothing that could stop me from accomplishing what I wanted to set out to do. In Dr. King's life, he laid a lot of foundation. And the one thing I really appreciated and helped me to get through tough times was to understand how tough a time he had to go through things. You know, whether it was marching at Pettus Bridge, whether he was out there, you know, on, in D.C. Uh, those were the, the big moments, right, where everybody saw them. But it was those quiet moments in the background that really told me what he was doing, right? When he was sitting around the table, the kitchen table, talking to folks that were there with him, saying, okay, this is what we've got to get done, and it's not going to be easy. We know what's going to happen when we walk out there. And so for me, every time I got into one of those tough situations, I'd sit there and think, you know, we all sit around a kitchen table, but once you walk out that door, everything's on, and you got to go out and do it. you got to follow through with it. If Dr. King was here today, I would ask him and say to him, you know, what really inspired you? And I know the answer, but also I would like to thank him for his leadership and to reach out to him and ask him if there was anything else that in my lifetime, if he was observing, could I have done better? Thank you, Dr. King, for inspiring me, for laying out the roadmap on how to be able to go out and accomplish what we do in our communities, and more importantly, to always stay true to our communities and make sure that we always keep our feet flat on the ground and well-rooted and being able to go out and accomplish the things for other people. As we've always said, we've got to do well before we can do good. And that's one of the things that I really, really would like to thank him for. Thank you, Dr. King. First, I would like to thank Lindy, the love of my life, as we celebrate our 50th anniversary on January 23rd, 2021. Thanks to our two children and their spouses, Christopher Marlena Garawal, Trinity and James Zavala, and our nine grandchildren for their loving support. And thank you, Denise Meredith, for nominating me. I also want to express my appreciation to the Phoenix Human Relations Commission, the Phoenix Equal Opportunity Department, and the Arizona OIC for my selection as the 2021 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Calvin C. Good Lifetime Achievement Award. Mr. Good and I crossed path for community development project, and after my election for the school board at Phoenix Union High School District, we made efforts to ensure that our minority and low-income students were offered the same educational opportunities that other students were receiving. I cherish my 30-plus years of interacting with the late City Councilman Calvin C. Good and his beautiful wife, Georgie. I miss them both. I thank God for the blessing me with this wonderful journey called life. I also thank Dr. Martin Luther King for inspiring us to continue to do the good work in our communities. And as the late Congressman John Lewis said on many occasions, when you see something that's not right, not just fair, you have a moral obligation to say something and getting into good trouble. I ask God to bless you and I give you a safe and healthy 2021. Thank you for this award.
congratulations to Harry Gerwall and to all of the MLK Living the Dream honorees. For closing remarks, please welcome back our co-chairs, Reverend Reginald Walton and Ron Williams. As we come to the close of this MLK Award celebration, we want to take the time to honor and thank all of our participants, all of our sponsors, and in particular, our host, the MIM, the Music Instrument Museum of Phoenix, Arizona. Also, it is my pleasure to serve on the Human Relations Commission. I would personally like to thank Dr. Jean Blue and the Arizona MLK Committee for trusting me to co-chair this event this year. I would also like to thank each and every one of you for joining in and tuning in with us this year. I know things might be a little bit different, but thank you. Also to my co-chair, Ron Williams, thank you for letting us have a little bit of fun as we co-chair this event this year. Looking forward to next year. Thank you so much, Ron. Thank you, Reverend Walton. It's been a pleasure to serve with you as well. And thanks to all of our participants. We appreciate the Torch Runners, led by Valerie Churchwell, and a special thanks to PetSmart and Verizon for presenting our program today. We also appreciate the support of SRP, USAA, and the Musical Instrument Museum for hosting this celebration. And of course, we thank our great partners, the world-class team at the City of Phoenix. Thanks to our performers today, Cassandra Williams and Maya Williams, and the wonderful trio of Nodge. To all of our Interfaith Prayer participants, thank you for blessing us, as well as Congressman Stanton and Mayor Gallego, who are always here for us. To our speakers, our keynote speaker, former U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder, and our special guest, civil rights icon, Dr. Benjamin Chavis, Jr. Thank you for blessing us with your words. Congratulations to our scholarship winners and our MLK Living the Dream honorees. To my good friend, Harry Gerwall, congratulations on a lifetime of service as our 2021 Calvin C. Good Lifetime Achievement Award honoree. In closing, as we make our best efforts to celebrate today, we can't deny that we are all collective witnesses to what's happening in our world. We need change, but change takes effort. Change in America has been painful and provisional. History will be our judge, but can also be our guide. We've been taught to love our neighbors as ourselves. As a nation, we are failing, but when we fail, we must make every effort to try again and again and again to get it right. This effort requires all of us. We might not want to face reality, but we certainly can't escape reality. We cannot escape our history. Our task right now is to have a sense of possibility that we can write a better story. On behalf of Dr. Jean Blue, Reverend Reginald Walton, and our entire committee, I just want to say, let's please all take care of each other. God bless you all, and God bless the United States of America. That concludes our 35th annual Arizona MLK Living the Dream celebration. Good day.